Hey guys, today I just wanted to take you through how I set up a session in my door to get it sounding really punchy and energetic from the get-go. These are by no means final mix settings or anything like that, but I find that this is a really good baseline template for when I'm uploading riffs here on YouTube as I don't want to spend hours and hours on a mix for this sort of thing. I view those riffs that I'm posting as mini projects where I'm wanting to learn to make good decisions quickly and improve and sharpen my skills in songwriting, recording, mixing. So uh, let me open up a new session here and we'll get started. Cool, so I'm using Studio One. Um, you can see I've got a blank session open here. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to just create a few tracks for guitars, bass and drums, and then just apply a preset on my master bus, which I will uh, run through what that is and, and why I'm using it. So let's get some tracks created. So first off, I'm going to create two instrument tracks and they can just stay as that name. I'm gonna create two audio tracks. We're going to pop contact on both of these. Um, we're gonna, let's use the Fairview kit. I really, really love this kit. Cool, there is Fairview and add contact on here and we'll throw on Emansky bass. Beautiful, get rid of the browser. First thing I like to do in terms of changes is on Emansky bass, I like to go turn this until it just hits bassist to humanize it a bit. And I like to cut the position off at like between five and seven, we'll, we'll go six today. I'm thinking that I might record something with my six string in drop D. So we're going to pop this bass into drop D. So it's A, D, A, D, G, C. I'm gonna leave it like that. We're gonna name these. So that one was Mansky bass. That one is Fairview. I like my bass to be red. So we're gonna do that. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create a third guitar track. I should have done that from the get-go. I'm gonna call it Live G. I like to have this one not running through any guitar bus or anything like that. This is my guitar playing through and actually monitoring what I'm playing. Cool, so the Live G is gonna be centered and go through the main output, the master bus. These two, I'm going to pan them left and right, and then I'm going to add a bus. I'm gonna label it G sub. I'm gonna change it to pink. I'm also gonna add one for bass. Sometimes I'll throw a sub in for like a, a bus for the drums, but I don't always do that. This is just for a quick riff video or a, a demo for my own, you know, my own review and listening. So we're just gonna leave it here. I know from using Fairview Kit that I like it to be down minus three dB with my setup. I know that with the Mansky bass, I like it somewhere in the realm of like 9.4, let's do that. And then I pull this down to around five and a half as well. The guitars, I pull them down to negative five and the G sub, we will adjust that uh, depending on what we do there. Cool, so that's the setup with the tracks. First thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to apply a track preset that I have. Let's just turn all those off for the minute. Next thing I'm gonna do is write in some drum MIDI so that we can at least get some audio going. Then I'll show you what the master bus settings are actually doing. So this is what we got here. First thing I have is a tape machine. I am using the T-Rex tape machine 80. I've just got it on the 456 tape formula 15 instead of 30 speed. And I've adjusted the bias and the input to my liking on something ages ago. And I decided that it sounded good and punchy enough to use as a bit of a baseline template. That's what that's doing. The next thing is I have an EQ. As you can see, this is called Nolly Master Settings. I literally just copy pasted this from a video that Nolly did. If you don't know who Nolly is, Adam Nolly Get Good is an incredible mix engineer. He was the bassist in Periphery. I don't remember what video it was, but you're welcome to copy these settings. Let's click on the each so you can see. Feel free to pause the video. So the reason that Nolly does this and the reason that I copied them is because he mentioned how he actually tends to shy away from how bright a recording needs to be when he's bringing it up to commercial standards. 
So he he was getting to the end of a mix and he'd have to bring all this high end in and his ears were kind of shying away from that. Aside from the fact that he's nolly, I tend to shy away from really bright stuff as well. So I thought this would be a really good idea. I like the whole top down mixing thing of mixing into plugins. You know, I'm not doing any Grammy award winning albums, but it works for me. So I run through this and this is what it sounds like. So we've got the tape machine on without the EQ, with the EQ. So you can see it's adding like a massive oomph to the kick, but it's also got quite a lot of nice brightness and sizzle to the cymbals as well. That's the second thing I have there. The third thing is this T-Rex bus comp. This is where I have it to start with. You can see it's this preset called the glue, which is what I'm wanting it to do. I'm wanting it to glue the whole mix together. This is what it sounds like without. And with. Now, when I'm recording, I generally have the L1 Ultra Maximizer on from Waves, and I just go load 16 bit pre master edit ready. That brings the volume up a bit. The reason that I use this is because it's lower latency than recording through Flatline 2 when I'm in low latency mode. Flatline 2 and the tape machine that I'm using in particular just add a little bit more latency than I want. So I don't actually leave that on. I just use it for while I'm tracking things. And then I take it off and I use Flatline 2. Now what I do here is I just come down to hybrid mode. So it's a clipper and a limiter. I go to hybrid so it's doing both. And this is all I do. Sometimes I mess with the color. Sometimes we bring the ceiling back a little bit. Sometimes depending on where the mix ends up, I might end up adjusting the drums down quite a bit or pulling the kick and snare back a little bit, which means that I can push this a little further without it clipping like, like that. So that's those. The other thing I need to do is I need to pop Parallax onto a Mansky bass. Now, it doesn't really matter what bass library you're using. If you're using a bass library, they usually have distortion sounds built in. The one in Umansky bass sounds awesome. I have Parallax and I just really like it. It's been handy sometimes when I've written bass out, tried to get a similar tone with a real bass and you know, Parallax has made that easy. It's Umansky bass, so I'm using Jacob Umansky's Jacob Umansky tones, toner. Throw that on bass immediately. Sounds good. The very last plugin that I'm gonna throw in here is on the guitar sub. I am going to open Virtual Mix Rack, open Dynamics, open the FG Stress, and generally I want like a slower attack and a faster release. So let's just do that. I leave it on 6.1 and sometimes I dial the mix back a bit and put one of the distortions on. Depends on the guitar tone. So again, these are all just starting places for a template. You might be asking why I don't have this saved as a template to just save all this setting up. It's because I want to get used to making these decisions myself and not just relying on something doing it for me. Yeah, you could argue that I've made the decisions and so therefore I should just use the template, but I wanna continue doing this because sometimes I don't remember how something was set and I have to figure it out again and I stumble across different settings or a different plugin that I didn't use last time that I end up really liking. So I don't wanna remove that aspect from the process, even though it might be a little faster. Uh, I like doing it this way. Cool, so the next thing I should probably do is write something. So I'm gonna grab my guitar, we're gonna pick a plugin and we're gonna to get to work. Here I have my Ibanez uh, AZ2402 in Prussian Blue. It's got the Seymour Duncan Hyperions in it. This is set up in Drop D. Let's pick a guitar plugin, tune it up and get into it. Let's go with Archetype Pliny X. Now I'm gonna take off the tape machine because of the latency. Wanna pop it on the live G track uh, so that it's in the center. So there's a preset that I know I like. It's like a modern metal thing. Uh, James Norbert Ivani, Modern Rhythm. <laughs> I've already had an idea for this. We're just going to hit record and see if this works. <laughs> Let's 
let's write in some bass and then we'll come back and do the guitars proper. I've just been through and I've popped in the bass and I've edited the drums for that second half. So it's a little more appropriate. This is what we've got now. Might just drop the drums a little bit. The next thing I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to create another instrument track and we're gonna call it SC for sidechain. I'm just gonna pop uh, my tie on here, which is just one of the built-in synthesizers that uh, Studio One has. I'm gonna go into drum and I'm just gonna go bass drum. What's this one? Cool, sounds good. Basically, I'm just gonna create a side chain, so let's just call that SC there. Uh, so what I do for this is I copy what's on the drum track, and then I go in and I remove everything that's not the kick. So that's what we have now. I like using the API 2500. Um, so we're gonna take from the output of the sidechain and I'll pop the API 2500 on the base bus. So now this sidechain, I'll probably drop the volume a little bit, is uh, coming through into the base sub. So it's essentially side chaining the kick. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm not routing out of Fairview. It is just a stereo out. So I can't really isolate the kick. So that's what I've got there. Um, so now, fast attack, fast release. You just want to duck the bass out of the way at the start of the kicks. Cool, that sounds fine. So now I'm gonna record the guitars and then you can hear what they sound like when I'm done. Okay, so I've finished retracking the guitars. They both have Archetype Pliny X on them with, yeah, the same preset we had before from James Norbert Ivanyu. I hope I'm saying your name correctly, James. I apologize if not. We've got that there. We've got the Live G muted and I've deleted that tape because we don't need it anymore. We've got the tape machine, the Infinity EQ, the bus compressor, Flatline 2, they're all on and active. Another thing I like to do with bass is I like to use double tap. So here is without master bus processing, without the compressor on the guitar sub, and without double tap on the side chain. This is what we have. If I bring all this stuff back in, this is how it sounds. Cool, far cry from finished, but uh, that's basically how I set things up and I just kind of take it from there. Let me know if this has been helpful for you. Uh, this is my first time doing a video like this. So yeah, I hope it's been helpful. If there's anything I missed, please let me know and I will try and cover that in any future videos. Cool, thanks guys.